give a bit of background on, on Lambeth. Uh, we've got pretty much a clean sweep on flood risk. Um, we have identified through Drain London 14 critical drainage areas. Working on the map for surface water flood in the Drain London outputs is about 49,000 properties, or it's 37% of properties in the borough. And on the death added burden funding, we hold just over 1% of the national flood risk. 15% um, of our land use is public highway, and 17% of land use is green space and parks. So we have some sort of option to do something, and that's the angle I'm looking at. But first of all, I need to blame people, because obviously, politically, I need to justify why I'm spending this over sewers. I can blame our friends at Thames. <laughs> um, you know, it's all well and good, David, saying 1991, you know, but it goes back further than that. <laughs> um, the loss of front gardens, well, obviously, I can blame my residents because they're being selfish with their vehicles and wanting to park on their front gardens and concrete them over. Um, removal of grass verges, I put the 80s. We had um, some people who decided that concrete and asphalt was the way forward rather than grass and nice, soft, fluffy things. Um, traffic calming, I put new labour, so I'm just kind of jumping on the bandwagon. Um, traffic calming to me is um, was a massive success through the 10 year um, targets, and it was, it was met, I and mean, it, was, it was exceeding. It was a great, great we, we don't celebrate it enough. However, Drainage was overlooked. Drainage was never incorporated into this, and we ended up with uphill gullies. I know of a location, I won't say which borough, but I possibly work there, where we've got a junction table with a catch pit linked to a gully, a pot. Problem is, the pot is up there. And as we know, apart from David Hydro, we yeah, can't put water back uphill. Um, enforcement, I'm going to blame legal, because I want to. Um, they don't see through the enforcement. You know, we've caught a builder bang to rights putting concrete down our gullies, but legal haven't got the time or can't get round to it. Um, efficiency, something Gordon was mentioning, you know, we're under a lot of pressure to save money and contract savings are an easy paper exercise to save money. I mean, why do, why do we need to supervise cleansing of our gullies? Um, we can save 250 grand a year. Self-monitoring, it works. <laughs> that was sarcasm. <laughs> um, maintenance, plan maintenance. Well, I'm going to blame our reactive colleagues. I know we're in the same team, but if it ain't 10 square metres, well, if it's more than 10 square metres, they can't touch it. Well, it's a connection. It's not down to us, and we can't lift the gully cover, which goes back to the efficiencies. Um, so there is a cost, which we're paying for indirectly. Uh, through this whole process. So I could quite happily sit back and blame all these people, and it's not my problem, Gov, and I can pack up now and go away. Um, again, this is one of my favourite slides and quotes. This is um, about collaboration and trying to work together. And as you can see, this is a discussion which has identified that there is a flooding issue, there's a flooding problem. Um, unfortunately, this was 1911. And that same problem still exists. So we haven't moved forward. And that was the old London County Council, which by definition is now Thames Water <laughs> on the sewage side. So I'm going to run through some schemes and what we're looking at. Um, one thing I'm very keen is, is maintenance schemes. We do these as bog standard. These are bread and butter. Um, standard practice. We all have standard set designs of what we do in our roads. Um, we use straightforward materials, whether it's ASP, asphalt, uh, small modular paving. And obviously they're materials which are identified and used by utility companies within the SORH. And obviously the cost is comparative. You know, there's no, nothing special. It's the norm, not the exception. So we're not talking these lovely posh granite schemes. We've imported granite from China or wherever else it may be fashionable to import from. So it's straightforward. So here I have Central Hill. 
plan maintenance through footway. Um, it's on the principal road network, so it's an A road, so gritted, bus routes, usual sort of stuff. Um, runs next to a park. Um, I said we separate the public realm because that's what we like to do. You know, there we have a park, there we have a highway, and never the twain shall meet. Um, we have our cross falls into the road for all footways, or majority of footways are designed to fall into the road. And there is a little bit of a groundwater issue at the top of the hill. So here we are. The top left is Elder Road at its junction with Central Hill. And as you can see, a nice typical build out, guard railing, three different types of bollard, I believe, um, and pretty much clutter, bog standard asphalt. Um, the curb would have only just been chased into the existing carriageway, so the existing carriageway surface is still under that build out. Uh, the bottom left is looking up Central Hill, and the top and the right is looking down Central Hill, which is where roughly where the groundwater issues are. Um, they come out at what a junction called Salters Hill. Um, so I decided free standard maintenance, nothing special. Um, we were going to put a verge back in, change a cross fall into the park because the park's there, so why not use it? Um, the verge I've constructed, I've, I've gone down 400, I've used 200 of open graded aggregate. Again, the reason I used the, decided on that was purely because it's a material use, utilities use or utilities can easily get hold of. So there's none of these arguments about, well, it's a special material, you need to provide it, et cetera, et cetera. And the rest of it is just standard footway construction. It's nothing special. So this is the slide which Richard and Nick. Um, on the left is looking up the hill, the manhole cover uh, in the corner there is actually where, as I said, the groundwater, there's three of those covers going up the hill and it's piped to take the groundwater to that cover at the bottom there into a gully direct into the combined sewer. Not take it into the park, we've created a whole infrastructure asset to move groundwater, which is typical. Um, the middle one is the build out at Elder Road. We ripped out the um, existing carriageway construction, again, down 400, 200 open graded, bit of sand then topsoil. And the right one is obviously looking downhill. This isn't, I mean, over, this completed in May and we've realized that, or I've realized that I've made some mistakes on it. It's not perfect. Um, we didn't realize there was an overrun issue, not on the build up, but looking up the hill. Um, apparently Chelsea tractors like to park there, but there was no, there was no evidence on the old ASP that people were parking up because it wasn't crazed or crap. Um, we also didn't put any check barriers in, in retrospect we should have, and possibly a cut off drain at the bottom and a build out. On the grass verge and overrun, obviously the initial reaction of people at work was, well, we'll put bollards in, or we'll do something, or we can raise the curbs, and it just kind of loses the whole appeal and the object of what a grass verge is. So, Hydro are kindly humoring me at the moment with trying to find a solution of possible grass verge which you can overrun without much damage and not using grass creep. He says, I know I have a lot of aspirations. Um, it's a highway stud scheme we're doing. This is one Steve Wilson mentioned. We picked two roads, or we're looking at two roads, Odd Louis and, and Chatsworth. They're in that little triangle where the church is or the cross is. You can see the um, modelling, this drain London output, but there's a pluvial risk, but we do actually have historical evidence in that area of properties being affected by surface water flooding. Um, it is being developed as a base. We are going into quite a lot of depth and detail on it and trying to capture a lot of detail. Um, as I said, Steve's working on it. We've got URS who are working on the modelling and will write up the final report. And I've also commissioned Sustrans to lead on the community engagement. So there's Ard Louis. There's no frontage on Ard Louis as, as, as it is, as you can see. It's just a road, but it's a dead space. Um, nothing much goes on there. So how do we bring that back into the public realm? Because that's what it is, it is public realm. Um, this is what Steve's kind of designed initially off the top of. The red lines are of the building 
speed's put in about 19 in both roads, which if we go for option two, which I'll explain about in a minute, uh, it's probably about 50,000 litres. Um, again, it's got to be easy reinstatement for utilities because we don't want it ripped up. It's got to be low maintenance. Amenity is essential. Although these are more for extreme events, we need them to be spaces which can be enjoyed and part of. I've put it down Free Range Kids, which is a Sustrans livable neighbourhood thing. It's about kids enjoying the street again, playing footy out in the street like I used to, or trying to kick at the cars driving at you. Um, and we want to kind of bring in the Green Streets approach from Portland and the ownership issues from Seattle and of Dr. Drain, and hence Sustrans have this engagement process, which hopefully we can do that. And it's looking, going further on the resilience and looking to cut off downpipes, looking to depay front gardens and bring it back. So it's a door-to-door -door process, not fence to fence. So I'm not solely keeping my eyes on the footway and carriageway. You know, it's about space, it's about the community, it's about residents. We're trying to look at the property values, we're trying to look at health and well-being. How far we go with that, I don't know, but we're trying to break this, get these, this data and break it down. Um, so the rain gardens, uh, the size Steve's come up with, I said the size of a cut of a parking bay, because that's a size everyone can deal with. Everyone understands the size of a parking bay. So he's kind of doubled it. Um, this is a, the five percent figure is the only figure that's come up in the last week. I, I discussed it a couple of years ago, but I would be happy if I could get a five percent reduction in runoff doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start building these projects up over and over the area and, and the borough, it starts adding up. Um, depth of construction is about 450. So there's three options. Option one is just is the slide which Steve's shown of in section. Um, so it's got a two cubic metre capacity. And the runoff rate, again, this has only just been done in the last couple of weeks, or the last week and a half by URS, by taking a one in 60 storm and just applied a, a very quick principle. It's very quick math. It's not detailed as yet. And there, it's about 4%. Option two, again, two and a half cubic metres. This is my preferred option because it uses open graded aggregate. Because um, I'm just thinking of ease of maintenance and utilities. Uh, runoff of 9%, and we've got a cost there of 3,900 which fits in roughly with what I was expecting. Well, it's less than I was expecting, to be fair. Um, and this is where the fun now starts, because option three is with the crates. Uh, it's got four cubic metres, as you can see. Captures 14% runoff. And it's not that much more expensive. So now I'm getting into the realms of where do I want to go and what do I want to play with? And what is going to be more cost beneficial? What happens if... Thames Water come along and decide that they're going to lay their main there. Um, are they going to repair it? Do I have to store this stuff, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So we're beginning to get into the mechanics of, of the scheme. So here's another cross section, which is with the open graded. Um, moving on, but going back to sorry, that we're, we're looking to start consultation with residents or engagement in September. So hopefully be on site in February, or certainly if not, our contractors will dig in a, a trial hole on the 31st of March. Um, Ingleborough Street. This is a weird little stub end of road, as you can see. Um, I think this is our storage area for bollards in the borough. It's because they run the whole length. And no one knows why. We just know that there are bollards there. Um, this road services those properties on the right you can see in the photo. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's nothing much. Opposite is an estate. Um, and there you go. A lovely bit of public room. Somewhere you'd all love to go, I'm sure. Um, on the left of the photo, you can see the two trees by the fence. What they're proposing to do is get rid of that grass area and put in a hard standing football stroke basketball court area. And they thought, well, whilst they're going to do that, they could do something with that bit of a road and take it into the park. And then they came to me and said, do you think you could do anything with it? I thought, well, yeah, why not? So I'm only at concept, and it's just me, Dory, 
in on a train. But basically, where the bollards are, I'm looking to move a curb line over to where the bollards are. The fence will move to where the bollards are, essentially. Um, move a path over, and then, as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, actually. No, sorry. Where the football pitch is, it's just basically a massive swell, rain garden, whatever it is, just an attenuation place, or we can put water and take it off the road and off the park. So it becomes, I like to call drainage neutral, it's probably not, but it's, it's what we want to take. I just want to take it out of the system, I want to hold it back from hitting the sewer. It's within a critical drainage area, one of our more serious ones. So again, money secured for that, so that will have to be delivered this financial year. So current status, as you can see, Central Hill's complete. Highway studs, design and modelling is in progress with uh, Steve and URS. Um, so hopefully consultation will start in September, if I can overcome the political hurdles. And Ingleborough, we got a meeting with councillors and residents later this month. Our opportunities, I'm a great one for opportunity. I like looking at the public highway and thinking, what could we do there? Um, I've done a lot of stuff in the past, <laughs> which is quite interesting. But um, Lambeth councillors have decided that the highway's maintenance backlog is significant enough um, to undertake an investment programme. So it's looking like we're going to get 10 million extra money this year. I've gone through the footway list uh, and I've identified through that 17 possible schemes. It's not guaranteed they're definitely going to go ahead, but that's what I've identified at the moment. So again, we're trying to integrate this whole maintenance, taking it forward approach. And obviously, it said, match within the CDAs. Opportunities. Isabel Street is um, a road which started off through the, early through the early surface water funding thing in 2009, which wasn't successful, but it moved forward under 106 funding. Now, they started on site yesterday, um, apparently. However, or two weeks ago, I was asked into a meeting to look at whether we could put suds in as the materials are being transported from China. Um, so they're looking at that. Old Town, we're looking to put... Um, this is in Clapham. Clapham Old Town, where the buses stand, if anyone knows it. But it's a massive swathe of concrete. We're looking to make that a public space, but we're looking to put a swale in one edge of that just to enhance the public space and reduce runoff. Uh, Venn Street is finished. Um, it's only a minor little thing. And again, they humoured me. And I asked if the, tree pit, if the footways could be graded to the tree pits. Um, so it's only a little thing, but it all adds up. The problem is the trees were olive trees. So I'm not sure that was the best thing. Um, here is what I see as an opportunity. I'm surprised TfL haven't taken that asphalt and use it as a bus lane, but I just think there's so much opportunity there to deal with rather than leave it as asphalt. Again, it's on the list. I'd love to do something there. Hopefully I will, but we shall see. And then just leave you with, what would you prefer, green infrastructure or suds? Take your pick. Um, and that's me completed one minute early. Thank you.